Okay, gonna run PS9 throttle. Let's see what we can do. So, full wattage, 25 amps pulling. So, we're climbing. It's a little hairy holding on to one hand. Thirty-three. I gotta slow down. Hello, welcome to Random Things. This is Ty, and today I'm gonna take my recently converted XC00 out for second trial test. Um, I have done some additional modifications. If you recall, the original modification was I added a shark style battery, um, but I couldn't get it to fit here, so I had to put it on a bike rack and run the system through the bike rack um, rear cargo carrier. Um, but that puts a lot of weight in the tail, so I was looking for a second type of battery um, to hide in that triangle frame. And so what I came up with is this triangle style battery from QWW. And by the way, they have been awesome. They've been very responsive to all my questions and needs, um, especially for asking for adapters and so on. Um, the only downside to this style battery is that you can't secure it in terms of like people can just undo the Velcro and steal your battery. So you gotta be careful. Now this is a 52 volt battery, um, so it's very different than a 48 volt battery in the sense that you're now then running at a 48 volt starting volt, 58 volt starting voltage. And I'm actually not sure exactly what it drops down to when it goes to zero. So that's the point of today's test. I wanna take it on a long distance ride just to see what is the max distance I can get at what average high speed and then I want to see what kind of speed I get at the various pedal assist modes. So keep watching and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so we're riding on PAS1 and it's full battery. So we're on seventh gear because the motor senses your tension. And so our average speed on this gearing at PAS1 is 20 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and up that. So you can see maybe an inrush. Right, so now we're running at seven amps, seven and a half amps, only a little bit faster, but there's a little bit of a hill right there. So maybe it'll go up to 22 as a steady state speed. <sighs> Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to hit the lights correctly. We're running at PAS3. Let's see, now our average speed will. Maybe ramp up to probably around 23 and a half, 24. But the lights are killing me here. Okay, running on PAS4, it's about 25. Let's go up. Woo! Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. About 28 miles an hour. <laughs> chasing. Chasing down some roadies. Should I pull? Should I pull for them? I should just drop behind them. That's not really fair to drop behind them. Yeah. PS3 on the trail now, but on your left. So we'll see. Let's try it on the trail. So we're at 54 volts now. It's hard to see. 54 volts now. PS3. Let's go up. Let's see how we do. So once you get past a certain level, it really doesn't give you that much more speed on pedal assist. Um, actually, it's expecting you to pedal. So you can see it's kind of holding me at 10 amps, right? So even if I go up, it's going to hold me not at full amperage, um, even though it's not the max speed I can go. But if I actually hit the throttle, you can see that it will call for more amps 
and drive me up faster than the pedal assist mode. Okay, so we're getting ready to head back home and we're starting with 20 miles, one hour, 52.6 volts. So we'll see how this goes. Another 20 miles, see if we'll get to zero or at least what the shutoff voltage is. Okay, at around 49 and a half volts, the battery went from a green to a red, but it's still giving me juice. It's limiting me. I'm only riding at 9 amps, but if I hit the throttle, let's see if it will actually give me more amps. So it's not restricting me. It is letting me go to 16 amps, which is about what it should at PAS3. So that's a that's a good sign that the program is set up for 52 volt motor. Last block of the ride, 48 volts left, and let's go up to nine. Throttle only, see what happens. Let me make this corner first, because I'm riding with one hand. Nine, throttle only. It's only gonna let me push out, oh, 17 amps. But uh, we're climbing. We're climbing 22, 23, 24. All right, running out of road. So I still have battery, and I'm about done with my ride. Okay, so we arrived at our destination. Ending voltage is 49. I still have battery left, and this is 30, 30. Nine miles. If I actually hit the button, what would it tell me? Uh, two lights. Huh. So it's still telling me it's got 50%. I'm not sure if I believe that. Well, that concludes the second trial of this particular modification. So again, this is a Bafang BBSHD, which is a 1,000-watt mid-drive motor. And I paired it with a 52-volt 20-amp battery. This is a triangle style battery. My original in trial one was a shark style, but it didn't fit in the frame. So I had to put it on a rack on the tail. Um, I didn't really like the way that looked. In addition, I didn't really like the balance of the bike with that much weight on the tail. So that's why I was looking for a battery that's more in the middle of the bike. So this is the triangle battery. Like I said in the beginning, the downfall of the triangle battery is that it doesn't really lock in. So you know, you, if you park it somewhere, you really got to think about, well, do I need to take the battery off um, and take it with me? Because there's no way to really secure it. At least I haven't quite figured that out. Maybe that'll be the third trial and I'll share that with you um, if I come up with a good solution for that. Um, so let's summarize. So I was hoping to ride to get to cutoff voltage, right? So this is where... I want to know at what voltage does the battery stop outputting amperage to the motor. Um, I was hoping that maybe I'll get to it, but I rode about 40 miles at an average speed of about 19 miles an hour. Now you have to really factor in that that takes into account the stopping and the reaccelerating and slowing down for lights and all that stuff. And really, I was really traveling when I was actually riding. Um, you know, anywhere from 22 and I actually maxed out around 34 miles an hour, the bike is scary fast. Um, and so even though I didn't get to cutoff voltage, I still got to that 40 miles and pretty close to an average speed of 20 miles an hour, which is kind of the, kind of the standard I would say is what you're really looking for is to be able to go 40 miles at 20 plus miles an hour. Um, if your bike can do that, um, you got a pretty solid bike. Now, this particular bike is not one of those factory bikes that you get from Trek or Specialized. This is a modified bike, right? But if you take into account that the battery, which is a 52 volt, 20 amp battery, it's around $400. And the motor, because I bought the 1000 watt motor, it's around $750. The 750 watt motor is only around 500 bucks, so I had to pay a premium for that extra 250 watt. Um, put that together, I didn't have a bike, so I had to go buy a bike. All in all, 
it was roughly $1,700. I did buy the extra warranty on the motor and the battery. That way, if I ever have problems, I can always call and have it covered. And then the bike itself, because it's from Costco.com, it's inherently got a lifetime warranty if the bike frame fails for whatever reason. So with that, you know, you get a really good bike um, if you're willing to take into account that it's not a fancy branding bike. Kind of like this bourbon, right? This is a Kirkland Birkeland bourbon, $30, but it's a damn good bourbon. And so if you're willing to take that risk and you like to tinker, um, you can put together a bike that is super fun and scary fast. With that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like and share button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That would really help me out. And as always, thank you for watching and cheers.